guys. The case of Ngoma and Addis versus the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality and Addis Court. Good day, my lords, my lady. My name is Ngaba Mafa, and this is Katongo Laiba, and we are here on behalf of the applicant. <clears throat> my lords and my ladies, may it please the court, my name is Shantae de Toy, and my co-counsel is Ivan Westazen, and we are appearing on behalf of the respondents. Uh, my lords, my lady, I shall be dealing with the right to housing in terms of Section 26 of the Constitution and the family separation rule and how it unjustifiably infringes on the right to dignity and the freedom of safety and security. And my co-counsel here shall be dealing with the lockout rule and how it unjustifiably infringes on constitutional elements mentioned. Now, the applicants in this regard assert that they are entitled to housing in terms of Section 26 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. And the respondents in this regard state that they are not obligated to provide housing and they base this assertion based on Section 26 2 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa in that they are providing housing within their available resources and they are progressively realizing this right. Okay, if you please the court, uh, yes, you come up. Thank you. <coughs> May it please the court, my name is Katongo Walia, as my co-counsel stated, I will be dealing with the unconstitutionality of the lockout rule, and then I'll conclude with submitting our prayers. Before I begin our submission, my lords, I would like to put into context the definition of a home that I use to substantiate my argument. A home, you'll find the reference in my page 10 of my head, which is a dwelling in which one habitually lives and the seat of one's domestic life and interests. Domestic life and interests would include where you, where you sleep, where you bathe, where you store your belongings, which is basically what the situation is with the shelter for the applicants in the matter. As it please the court, I'll now begin my submission. The lockout rule is a rule that involves, that, that forbids applicants, residents in Ikaya shelter from having access to the home from 8 p.m. to 5 p.m. in the evening during the weekdays and from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. during the weekends. We have a special scenario with the second applicant, Mr. PC, who works night shifts. Therefore, he's exp he has no place to recuperate during the day when he comes back from work and is forced to find, find alternative shelter or uh, places to recuperate. We're aware that there's a drop-in center, but when you look at the nature of the drop-in center, you see that it is... <coughs> Excuse me, but before you go to the drop-in centre, yeah. can I repeat, repeat my question? Why can that person not ask for special permission to come back into the shelter during the day yes. and sleep? Um, I would actually, that's a very good and question. And has he done so? Yes. Because there's not a shred of evidence to say that any such request had been denied um, in the past. Um, the, the facts don't necessarily specifically state that, but I would infer from the situation that he should have, because it, the facts state on paragraph 21, it states that unless special permission is obtained in advance for the shelter, man, for the shelter, shelter manager, the doors shelters are locked at 20. So this is to obtain prior permission to enter the shelter after 20. It's not permission to have access to the shelter during the day. So it does not make provision for access to the shelter during the day, and the facts are very vague on whether or not you're able to. But one would seem that you wouldn't have a person stay, sleep out in the streets if he was able to ask the shelter manager for access to sleep in the dormitories. If that was available, we expect the facts to state that. But the only thing, that the, the respondents argue that it's a matter of security because it means they, they're worried about the security of their residents. So I'm s submitting that if they were able to implement security measures to, to be able to accommodate less restrictive measures, this wouldn't, there wouldn't be need for this situation. Yes, thank you. Yes, the respondent's case. May it please the court. This is a case concerning the reasonableness 
of temporary emergency accommodation offered in the wake of an eviction. The central issue in this case revolves around whether the applicants can legitimately expect to exercise the same rights and entitlements which would accrue to a person living in their own home at the shelter, and whether they are entitled to claim permanent housing immediately. I'll be dealing specifically with the distinction between permanent housing and temporary emergency accommodation and the reasonableness of the family separation rule. The case made out by the applicants is based upon the proposition that the shelter constitutes their home and that the accommodation afforded to them pursuant to the High Court order is that of an alternative or substitute home and not that of temporary accommodation. In equating the shelter with a home, the applicants further contend that they are entitled to exercise all the rights and amenities that a person is allowed to exercise in their own home. The question whether this assumption is sustainable lies at the very heart in this dispute and will assist the court in determining whether the applicants can legitimately expect to exercise the rights they seek to enforce that ultimately can only be exercised in one's home. We acknowledge that the applicants have a right to a home and everything that comes with a home, but Ikaya is not a home. The applicants were at all times aware that their stay at Ikaya was limited to a maximum period of 12 months that could be extended on a month-to-month -month basis by pro as recommended by a social worker. The mere fact, of, mere fact of residence at Ikaya and the fact that the applicants temporarily have no other accommodation does not entitle them to regard the shelter as their home. I say Ikaya is not a home because there is an inherent distinction between permanent housing and temporary emergency accommodation. It is our submission that the Supreme Court of Appeal judgment is correct. Why? Because it, because it looked at the circumstances in which these rules were applied and the, and the fact that the accommodation was provided in terms of an emergency. For all these reasons, it is our submission that the family separation rule is reasonable in the circumstances in which it is applied. I have no further submissions. My co-counsel will now continue. Before you sit down, do we know from the facts how many men <coughs> are accommodated in the shelter? How many women are accommodated? How many children are accommodated? We only how know many of them are families? How many of them are single? <coughs> we only know of the five applicants. Um, so we don't know the other components? We don't know the others. Well, we do know that the shelter is full. Yes, we do know the shelter yeah. is full. May it please the court. I will be dealing with the following issues. Firstly, the lockout rule, then the contract incorporating the two impugned rules, and lastly, the applicant's claim for permanent housing immediately. The lockout rule governs entry and egress from the shelter during the day um, and, that the, and provides that they must vacate the shelter between 8 and 5 on weekdays and 9 and 5 on weekends, and that they must return to the shelter no later than 8 um, in the evening unless special permission has been obtained in advance from the shelter manager. I would just like to draw this court's attention to a uh, submission made by the applicants and I draw the court's attention to paragraph 15.1 of the clarifications where it says there that there is no specific um, notice period that the applicants need to um, no specific time limit to ask for special permission to enter late or exit late out of the shelter. The applicants criticized the lockout rule for being unreasonably harsh and infringing several of their constitutional rights. Some of these reasons advanced for, for these criticisms are that the second applicant who works night shifts is unable to recuperate in the shelter during the day that the applicants have not been able to recuperate in the shelter during the day if they are feeling ill, that the lockout rule has forced them to walk around the streets or hang around in public parks, that the applicants are locked out of the shelter after eight, irrespective of whether they have a legitimate reason, and that the lockout rule has exposed many of them to inherent dangers in street life. Well, before you proceed from that, do you accept in this argument in that it is a limitation of their constitutional rights? My Lord, it's our submission that we acknowledge the fact that there's a limitation on their rights. We submit that in view of our submissions, we have convincingly demonstrated that the shelter does not constitute the applicant's home, that the shelter is of a temporary nature where a limitation of their rights is justified, 
and that the applicants are not entitled to exercise the same rights at the shelter as they would have had at their own private home. For all these reasons, we submit that the applicant's case be dismissed. No further submissions. Yes, do we have any reply? Uh, yes, my lord, my ladies, may it please the court. Firstly, I'd like to deal with the issue of contract that was touched upon by my co-counsels. Here, they stated that the applicants in this regard entered into this contract by their own volition or they will. We state that they did not show um, sufficiently that they entered into by means of consensus in that it was infringed upon. They had no alternative means of um, accessing any form of housing and therefore they only had to enter this contract by means of um, coercion or mm. by means of not having any other in means fact of fact established that they objected to the rules prior to signature. My Lord, on that note, I would like to bring the court's attention to paragraph 23 of the set of the facts. Here it states that when they relocated to the shelter, the applicants complained about the lockout and family separation rules, but then the respondent refused to relax them. So on that notion, it shows that they did not necessarily want to enter into the respective rules that the respondents had shown to them. However, they um, undeniably, um, hesitantly, I'm sorry, had to enter into this because they had no other alternative means. Yes, and that, that issue was clarified yes, in ma clarification to the facts. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Paragraph 14. Okay. Uh, my Lord, the respondents also state that the mothers are generally better suited to address the needs of the children. This hurts me also as a man. And in terms of Section 28, Subsection 2 of the Constitution, it states that the needs of the children are of paramount importance and that children must be accommodated by both parents. In order... Well, that can't always be. Yes, and... We totally agree and on that notion, my lord. However, that, when there has to be a limitation, uh, is it not correct that when we deal with a four-year-old child and a six-year-old child and a nine-year-old daughter, those are better cared for by the women? I agree, my lord. However, that perpetuates the stigma that the woman's place is in the kitchen or at the home. And and in this case, in the dormitory. <laughs> oh, the dormitory. <laughs> and also, it makes it more burdensome on the woman to ultimately... Um, have any form of family responsibility or taking care of the children. Yeah. Men themselves The question can. is, in an emergency, where there is an inevitable limitation. Yes, my lord. Which ultimately comes to the crux of our argument that there could have perhaps been more or less restrictive measures that could have been taken into account. Um, I do not, I think with regards to public policy, there would not be any objections to families actually staying together within the bunk beds, as stated within the applicants themselves, that there's only one family in this regard. We stated here that mothers already have to share dormitories with children who aren't even their own, boys who are at the age of 16, and uh, girls who are already at the age of 16 themselves. So we are saying that perhaps a less restrictive measure would be a situation whereby the age limit could be reduced, whereby um, the childs are possibly like, less fallible, and um, because there's already so many changes that are happening. We know that 16-year-old boys have sexual thoughts. We know that... Um, Women themselves are very private with regards, and also with regards to the African culture, it is forbidden for women to actually expose themselves or to walk around in semi-naked or nude regalia um, in the presence of children. Is so, there any evidence of that? No, that is <laughs> just, I would like the court to take additional notice of that. So in, on, on that notion, perhaps a less restrictive measure could be taken, and public policy would dictate that, again, it would be speculative, but possibly a reasonable speculation in this regard that people would not necessarily uh, oppose um, the re-administration of the manner in which the rules are uh, administered in a sense that one family ultimately has access to one rule whereby they can all share and um, have comfort and peace of security and dignity. The court order <coughs> said that they shall be granted um, Adequate temporary accommodation within yes, my lord. So they um, get a permanent accommodation. It was the same court order that stated that they should be subject to adequate house rules. Yes, Until my they lord. get permanent accommodation. Yes, my lord. So now, is why it correct then that they would be on the streets after September? 
I understand what you're saying, my lord. I'm saying that the respondents have already shown a will to not necessarily listen to court orders within the first place. So there's absolutely no assurance <laughs> that they shall be granted permanent housing immediately. May you please the court, will I be of any more indulgence? Yeah. Thank you. Well, do you have any reply? Uh, we shall reserve our judgment. Court will adjourn. Bye.